Hi there, this is your Martin Shaman, Maria Maria and Rainbow Land here with the weekly forecast. It starts at the 31st of July and ends at the 6th of August. I'm out here in nature here at our new home on the countryside, an old farm uh, turned into a non-farm but more rather than a park uh, natural spot in the middle of the oldest forest of Denmark. Um, such a spiritual capital. <laughs> um, it's just close to the ashram, the Vasan ashram, where so many, so much transformation and transmission, meditations has been going on since '92. Um, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a hole to the sky here, uh, or the, to to the heavens here. The energy is so different. When I came here the first time with the television crew of of the te one of the television stations I was working on years ago. Uh, we, we were driving through the area and at the time I consciously didn't know there was an ashram here and that the energy was different. And I asked, uh, by chance we drove here, of course, it was, we were supposed to pass here. And, by ch and, and, then, I, and then I tell the, the driver, the, the, man, the owner of the television station, he's driving the car, I'm saying, please stop, I need to take a picture right here. And we're just close to this place. I want to live here one day, I say. Why? It's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I'm saying, you try to look around and then tap into the energy here. Of course, they thought I was a, some sort of a freak because... And at the same time, they knew what, what I was talking about. He was also into nature and stuff, but not as spiritual. But they kind of got it and didn't get it. Doesn't matter what. I just knew already then that this was where I'm, I was going to live. And then a couple of years later, I discovered the ashram, heartfulness, Ashmark, and I discovered that actually so many people are working on the, uh, using the energy right here because it has such a powerful connection to um, the higher realms. Uh, and now the prediction has come true and I live here. I live in Tokyo, we live in Tokyo, me and my twin flame. Again, I will make a program about twin flames because it's rather interesting. Many people are finding their twin right now because we're incarnating with the, our counterpart that usually are on the other side, in the other realm, but we are coming down simultaneously because we need to alter something here on the planet Earth. Right now, the energy needs to alter and go from the changing from the Yan energy, uh, Yang energy, the masculine energy, the patriarchal society, uh, into more f uh, matriarchal, yin, uh, feminine, and this has nothing to do with feminism at all. So if you are a guy watching this, Mooney, my dog, <laughs> she's 15 by the way, Leo. Uh, if you're a guy watching this, don't worry, it concerns of all, uh, us all, but especially the guys actually. Uh, it doesn't mean that we will let go of the patriarchal good things that we Obtain. So of course this doesn't mean that we have to let go of all the good things that we learn through the patriarchal times. Um, we will have a balance between them. You know, it's like any kind of vehicle with too much weight in one side that's driving, uh, you know, misusing one side of the car because uh, there's too much weight on one side and too little on the other. Any kind of uh, vehicle driving like that will be ruined over time. Um, or damage, uh, anything in out of balance, uh, doesn't matter what uh, it is, um, will eventually have to find its balance and this is the turning point that we have reached. So um, it's a connection with Mother Earth, that is the yin energy. 
with nature. So if you feel, felt more drawn for, in, to getting into nature, swimming in the lakes, as you also will see in one of the videos here, connecting, you know, like I'm doing here with the trees, being barefoot, stepping, uh, you know, walking barefoot, feeling the ground, um, reconnecting with the feminine side. Also being able to listen. That is one of the very, very important parts of this. And um, I've had it in my life, I've had stuff going on in my life where I've had to explain what I meant by listening because I would often say to, to, to someone, um, oh, it would be awesome if you could uh, listen a little more to what I was saying. And, and the person didn't say, well, I am listening, but I felt, no, this person is not listening. And then I had to, you know, um, then I had to explain and even realize myself, what did I actually mean by that listening? And um, of course it meant that that person was mentally listening to the words, getting the concept of what I was saying, but was not listening with the heart. It wasn't giving space and room for what I was saying in this person's system. Because the person said, but I don't agree with what you're saying, that's why you feel like I'm not listening. I'm like, I don't need you to agree with what I'm saying, I need you to really hear what I'm saying. You know, because often we tend to interrupt, oh, I already know what you're saying, then we interrupt halfway through the sentences and, and play the ball back. But that's the masculine uh, ego side wanting to prove the point. Um, through the, one's own point, instead of actually feeling into where do you come from. We are seven billion people, seven, bil seven billion, four hundred, uh, uh, four million and something people here um, on this planet. So um, there will, there's just as many realities and, and this means that it's not about being right or wrong. It's about accepting in our hearts and in our whole being where the other person is coming from. That is real listening. And that is a feminine side, a feminine aspect. And whether you're a man or a woman, we're both as bad as, uh, at it because we always focus upon giving our opinion instead of receiving what you are coming with. And it's not the mental categorizing, uh, conceptualizing what the other person is saying. I'm, I'm talking about listening with the whole body. Just being, allowing yourself to receive, allowing your in, inner child to come out, allowing your inner world to be real and to be there and have space and room and to have its silent voice. You don't always have to speak to say something. You can just be in a room and be the example because we need the light workers to stand out now. We need the light workers to come forward, move forward. I have been here with Heartfulness. There's been a seminar because of a master's birthday and now a family seminar coming up close to this ashram. So people from all over the world um, has been here and especially from, from uh, France and, and Germany and Russia, Uzbekistan, uh, so many different <laughs> regions of the world. Um, so uh, I, was, I was talking about astrology as the lunar eclipse was there and, and there were people that never saw me before but I was just talking and they saw the blood moon behind me as I was going through the signs. It was spacey because they hadn't gotten any idea of how I, what I looked like and that was the most awesome moment for me because they listened with their hearts to what I was saying, not just conceptualizing. They weren't, didn't have to focus upon me or whatever. That's why it's nice right now uh, that uh, I am not close to the camera, but you can see the nature, you can see the lake. I don't know how, how easy it is to see because it's so green and the, the green is reflecting in, in the lake, which is the earth and the water is the feminine energy. And Mooney over there, <laughs> nature, you know, yes, she has a good, uh, animals has good earth connection because they have four legs, so they have something to touch the earth, um, the ground with. But I was with these people and I felt this unity, this connection. So look, look upon your own life. Who is the soul group that you really feel connected to that gives you something that makes you want to move forward through, towards being uh, the highest potential of yourself, towards actually making a difference on this planet. 
Um, especially I felt this feminine union. I also had a reading with this wonderful, also heartfulness um, a girl or woman. Uh, and she uh, she was also talking just as I have been several times around the cancer eclipse and also to can the Cancerians about how the yin energy needs to come forward. Then she starts during the reading also talking about it and so many things during the reading uh, came up um, where we just felt this union so strongly. Uh, and the same thing happened with, with the people from Heartfulness and we went to swim in a lake um, amongst others, this amazing, these amazing women, one from Uzbekistan, another one from Russia, Moscow. Moscow. Um, and we went swimming together in this lake, uh, amongst others. There was also two other people. Um, and we uh, and I, I talked about this that we need to bring it forward on the on the earth and the planet. And they are very spiritual people. For for years and years, they have been meditating, cleaning, and and being responsible for the journey here on life, on earth. So uh, one of the women came this morning after morning meditation satsang at the ashram, and she said, "I really felt what you were saying. That's true. That's what we need to do." This is what we need to alter and we need to not take the manipulative side of the feminine nature uh, and misuse it in ways where we seduce the men to do something for us. That's also power, that's a misuse. What I'm meaning is give, give space for other people's feelings. It doesn't matter if you agree or not, it's not about agreeing. About so the camera overheated. It's not about agreeing. It's about really listening, to hold each other, you know, to make space, to make room for each other. That's when you connect on a hard level. That's where you connect not only with the mind, but with your whole system. And that's what we need to learn as a species now. Because the reason why we are effing up the earth is because we don't listen to her signals anymore. We can't hear her. Because we've trained the mind, the rational mind, to be the only sound we're listening to. But real listening, we forgot. The yin energy is the earth. So we can't hear the earth talk to us anymore. We, can't, we don't really hear each other. Because especially men are trained to not feel Oh, you're a real man, Tarzan. You know, you're not supposed to, feel, to to cry. But that's the error. That's the spot on the imbalance on this planet. Another example is that we have Mars retrograding, right? And it was uh, even uh, conjuncting more or less uh, this uh, full moon lunar eclipse last week that was so powerful. And. Um, Mars is uh, assertiveness and my will, this way, it's willpower, you know. So Mars is wanting things to be a certain way. And uh, Mars retrograde is learning to let go of wanting things to be a certain way. Learning to release your idea of that things has to be this way and start being receptive. The yang energy is also Mars and the yin. The Yan energy wants to penetrate, it wants to move forward, it wants to have success, it wants to go this way and da da da. It controls it, it dominates, etc. The Yin energy receives. So the Yan gives, the Yin receives. If you let go of that things has to be a specific way, I want things this way, I want my house to be like this, because of all the, the Leo, uh, we have the Leo uh, Taurus things activating. You want things to be this way, exactly like that. This is what you desire, this is what you want. But with Mars Retrograde, you need to let go of that. And then you can start receiving what your higher self actually wants. So it's also about trusting the process. I always say that a lot. Trust the process. I also say it to myself, of course. I'm just channeling also right now, right? So we need to learn how to trust the process and receive the information. Receive and notice the signs that are all over the place. And this eclipse was just a precursor, as I said two weeks ago with the, with the cancer eclipse, it's just a precursor for what's going to happen and go down over the next two years and it will just intensify. So you better practice your skill of letting go of the need to control. Because then even better ways can be shown to you. 
The distrust is breaking the harmony, it's ruining the harmony. And distrust is also praying for what you don't want. So start focusing upon what it is you really want. And this channel and my readings as an astrologer, I've noticed that I never get a client that's just one that talks about the superficial things. I get all the light workers that has deep, profound things they need, want to change on a karmic level. I have Pluto exactly on top of my uh, in sun sign astrology in opposition to my sun. on the, seventh, the tip, tip of the seventh house. This means that where I meet other people, I can have the benefits, I can also have the non-beneficial things, but I've learned to deal with it more and more over the years. But I can have the benefits of, fits of Pluto going very deep within and transforming on a very deep level. So it's never just, you know, so if you're on this channel and you feel drawn to what I'm seeing, even though you also see me, you know, in my designs and maybe looking a little... For some people, some spiritual people, like someone who, sh who cannot give a message like this, that's why I said it was nice that people couldn't see my face when I was talking during the blood moon eclipse. They said there were around 30 people at one point and I didn't even realize who they were and they didn't know who I was, so I could just channel the messages from the other side, you know, and without focusing on how I look or whatever. So, Please don't feel distracted by anything like that uh, and focus upon that I know that people that are getting attracted to me are here to really join with me, unite with, not just with me, but with, with the energy of the people, everyone who wants to find the core of their life purpose, to do their duty as a light worker and to do your duty as a light worker is not necessarily having a lot of followers or likes or being famous for this and that has nothing to do with how many people you, re you reach and nothing to do with how many likes you get. You know, th this is Leo. These are Leo times when, while the North Node is still in Leo till October, uh, November, October, November. This is about being your true authentic self. Daring to be that. And once you integrate the yin energy, you automatically touch people around you. You don't even have to speak. But in order to get in there, you have to feel the different things you've escaping, been escaping because the yin energy is also the introversion. And if you have kept running for something on the outside and pushing forward instead of surrendering and receiving, there's some work you need to do and you're probably already doing it. If you're watching this, you are a spiritual person. Otherwise, you probably left the channel already. The yin energy is also spiritual because to receive spiritual messages, you have to be open to receive. And the receptive side is the yin, the feminine side. Uh, this, of course, again, I have to say, masculine feminine has nothing to do with man, woman. It's a, it's, it's a part, it's a natural side of, of, of you know the yin and yang symbol, white, black, with the, the opposite color dot inside of it, integrated in a beautifully harmonious way. So you better be prepared because this is just the first out of some eclipses that are going to be intensified. So better learn to release and surrender, let go of the things that you no longer need. You don't need to control things, let them go. When you clash with someone or something, practice your yin energy. Don't react. See if you can hold them in your space with no words. That way they can, they can, it can be healed, whatever they're going through. They're just projecting, perhaps. Or maybe they're mirroring something inside of you that you need to look upon. But you cannot listen with your whole system and hear your higher self speaking if you're always on the, I want this quest of your ego or your willpower. So now we are asked to turn down our, our yen energy while Mars is moving retrograde. We also have Mercury moving retrograde. So the rational mind that wants to figure all things out needs to let go and reconsider instead, revise in order for a new period to come. Okay, my dog is getting inappropriate. This is essential also in your relationships. If you think about the times where you and your partner, and any kind of partner, 
so business partner, uh, any uh, friends um, where you haven't understood each other uh, simply by the fact that you didn't <laughs> accept and, and recognize that their reality was just as real as yours. Um, and as we open up to our spirituality, which is also the yin energy, the intuition is very much cancer. We have to focus upon that for the next couple of years. The third eye. Then it's so much easier for us to accept the different realities there are. And we will have less quarrels, less confrontation, less problem. Wherever the South Node is is where we feel trapped and it's in Aquarius, uh, close to Mars. So, um, there can be an underlinement of uh, what the Aquarius energy, the, the downside of the Aquarius energy uh, is that you just have a revolting or revolution for the sake of the revolution or the revolting trying to change something that maybe even doesn't even need to be changed. So that I strongly encourage you not to do. Um, also, if you look upon like it's also humanitarian organizations and there have been so much uh, in the media around that they use all the money on salaries and none of the money actually goes to the people that people pay to help, like stuff like that. Um, there are many different uh, examples. But I would rather ex I would rather focus upon what, where we should well, where we could go potentially as a community as a society rather than focus upon what could go wrong. So the in the yin energy is just softness, you know, allowing a soft side to come out. Like my partner always say, "Oh, this is your sweet soft side." You can hear it when my voice turns to in a different, in a specific way. And he's good at it. He has a good energy, yin energy. He has a strong balance between the yin and the yin. He's very masculine at the same time as he's very feminine. He has both sides, and he do, you don't lose anything. Oh, Muni is still here. I mean, you don't lose any dignity as a man for doing that. This is. What gives him the most strength is that he has this balance. It's so much stronger to have your feminine and your masculine side being uh, in balance. So that rawness that we have seen, that it, oh, it's cool, you know, we have tattoos all over and be raw and right. I'm not saying there's anything bad in having tattoos. That's not what I mean. It's just that I come from a, a town, a harbor town, uh, where there was so much rawness. Always heavy and death metal, and and, uh, and and that's also something you can ground by that, and you can face your demons. So it's not that this should not be there at all. It's just that there's been an imbalance between that we have to be masculine and raw and move forward and push through, uh, and to just let our soft side show. So it's about trusting, because of course some of some of us that have shown our soft side and has been knocked down for doing it, it can be it can have some fear about showing the spiritual side of you, showing your weaknesses. But that's a strength. The cool people are the ones who dare to actually show their weaknesses. Oh, I just wanted to check out that she wasn't jumping into the water now. Went to the lake yesterday, she loved that. So let your sweetness come through, man or woman, and inspire others to do so, is what I encourage you to do. And trust the process, let go of the need to control. One of the songs we made, in the duo, Maria Maria, um, Dahol Manai, we made uh, in 2002. It's a song, it's very much in connection with the feminine because and I will sing it um, before we go into your personal sunshine um, something to do with your breath as well because in any inhale is followed by an exhale but if we keep taking in wanting more and more we don't release 
that balance is also bad for the body, you know. Like when we are very stressed and breathe only up here and we never breathe in to our stomach and feel the whole body. And we lose uh, the earth connection and the calm, the peace, the, the balance. Because we take in more and more and more, but we never release and surrender the out breath. There's many the yoga pack practices and meditations. Again, I always encourage you to, if, to find the right meditation form for you, or yoga, or whatever can make you go a little more into. I always recommend heartfulness because I've tried so many different throughout the last 20 years systems, and this is just by far the most powerful one. Um, you can always write me. Look at the email and the, and the text if you want to know where there is a free, because it's, it's a free organization. People do it voluntarily, so there are people all over the world. That's a, just as I said, the women I was connecting to, and also some men, um, some men, uh, many women men and women all over the world uh, that are here to help you if you want to learn how to meditate and get the transmission, because in heartfulness you get the level of the meditation turned up like times five. It's not mindfulness, because we want to get out of the mind and into the heart. That's why it's called heartfulness. But the breath is important, the inhale and the exhale. And sometimes if you make the exhale longer, you let go more easily. So in 2002 we made this song, it goes like this. Breathe in the summer magic, breathe out. Feel the wind by the sea as you're walking with me. Breathe in, relax your body, breathe out. Feel the heat of the sand as we walk hand in hand. A day without rain, I feel alright. Horizons of light, sun, a darker day, warm winds of change. It's a good life. Horizons will light up the way. Yeah. So this is also about the glasses you wear. You know? If you choose to see the light, it's going to be there because we manifest like this, what we think. Our strong, our thoughts are strong. Stronger than we sometimes realize. Quantum healing is instant healing there's nothing weird about it it's you choosing to heal a part of yourself it's you choosing to go another direction warm winds of change you choose if they're cold or they're warm the downside of aquarius is that it can be cold co-ruled by saturn which is cold you can always hear if people are following their hearts because it's warm you feel it feels warm what they're saying and doing also with yourself but if you have trust and an open, warm heart, and you follow your heart, no matter what others say, the change will be good eventually. So keep staying on that track. We're having Uranus doing some things this week, but I'll mention that in your personal sun sign. This was for all the signs. And as I always keep saying, uh, for me, the collective report is the most important, because we need to have a paradigm shift is happening, whether we like it or not, now. And as I sang in the song, hand in hand, we need to walk. Because united, we stand so much taller. Let's go to the personal signs. <laughs> mm. Yeah. The interesting thing that I found, or that I saw now during uh, 
these times where we need to learn about the yin energies, the precursor for the next couple of years, um, is that I don't see the manipulation anymore. Because one of the reasons why it's been hard to, for the world at large to take in the feminine energy is because the female's ability to manipulate and use the intuition to, or their, you know, skills, our skills um, in a negative way. So um, I really feel that the, the women that I'm connecting with right now are my sisters, everyone. I also feel men, like yesterday when we were swimming in the ocean, really, I uh, was we swimming in the, uh, at the sea and also at the ashram, uh, meditating together, eating together. They call each other sisters and brothers and they see the women as sisters, uh, someone they can unite with, not in a sexual way of wanting to conquer or dominate, but rather wanting to connect with. Um, but I feel it really, really obviously because I always mm, felt competition that, you know, females between them, like, oh, you are, you're wearing the nicer dress or you are more beautiful than me or you have a more pretty voice or what, whatever, you know, competing in a way where there was jealousy and there was, you know, distance. But now I feel the union, the sisterhood coming up. Um, and the less we can be as women, manipulative and using the feminine power in a negative way, but uh, taking advantage of the intuition um, that also allows us to feel where the men are instead of always stretching them to, to, to just hold them in our space. Um, the more attractive it is for, the, for the, the males to integrate the feminine force within them. So let's all, all the women here, let's try to be the best versions of the feminine to show the way and all the men out there who actually have a very strong feminine side uh, intuition, a capability of staying in their emotions and feelings and having their inner child intact, Sarah, because many women, <laughs> most women don't know how to use their femininity. I come from a very masculine harbor town where when I expressed my femininity, it was suppressed, of intent, attempted suppressed. Um, even by the women, they were not very romantic and they were not very emotional, they were not, you know. So this is not about men and women, it's about integrating it at society at large. In society at large. So hi there, Leo. So it's your personal sign now. Before it was the collective, which is also very important, just as important. Come, Muni. Double Leo coming here. Um, and uh, that's why that you uh, are still on and need to listen. Because Muni just underlined that uh, it's Leo's turn, the double Leo. Okay, so every week I get a song. It's not always that I sing it, but for each sign I have a song thing in my head. And this song, I don't know all the lyrics, but I know the most important part or that that's what's playing in my head and it goes da 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 how to feel about it there's something in the way you move makes me feel like I can't live without it and it takes my breath away I want you to stay mm, the song to me is so deep, it's about some deep connection. And I guess with you guys having had, um, not only that, I'll come to the other, I just got a message. Um, you having had the uh, Neptune in your eighth house, you know, creating this mystified, mystify, mystify me, by Inixus, yeah. Um, mystified uh, sense to some of your connections to others or maybe just a spiritual connection to the other side being intensified um, making a good aspect or a very very fine aspect to uh, your fourth house your home uh, how alive uh, with jupiter um, 
your home has been important to you and there has been perhaps there's been some expansions there or changes there um, in a positive way that makes you connect make you connect deeper but this week um, <laughs> we also have still have mercury going retrograde in your sign so maybe you you want to move forward with something but there's a lot of you know stop st stop go stop go um, where you cannot really you know there's something in the way you move <laughs> You try to move forward, but then you're forced to stop. Try to move forward, forced to stop. What is the dog doing? Oh, she's eating here behind me. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, um, because, you know, with the retrogrades, uh, we reconsider things, we revise things, we look over things again to understand them better, to understand your identity better and what it is that you really want. And there's a square between your work, work um, house or someone from work or your career house the 10th house uranus and suddenly something can come up, come up uh, between you and someone like someone you have a relationship with it can be a partner business partner or someone from work because mars is retrograding up there in um, in in aquarius your seventh house of relationships so maybe this week someone says something you don't really want to hear or says something in a way or suddenly that doesn't come in a good time timing for you so you would rather have live without it <laughs> you know uh, so uh, sometimes we just need to accept that uh, life ain't um, always just easy and moving forward and just take a bite of something nice like Mooney there is doing <laughs> eat a cookie but still be healthy <laughs> with all the things going on in your sixth house. You, you are still focused upon altering, 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 altering your day-to-day -day life and your work life and how to manage to balance this because Uranus is also making a, a nice uh, trine to Saturn up there in your sixth house. So still, work-wise, you can move forward, but there can also be, you know, a stick in the wheel, as we say in Denmark, uh, communication-wise, um, especially with the two planets retrograding where sometimes it's, it feels like, oh, it's, it's actually nicer just when stuff is retrograding to, to be at home and reconsidering and actually giving yourself the proper time to do that. But in our stressed society, we don't always get that time, do we? So um, if there comes some come a kind of a weird situation where communication is lost, then just accept it. Um, you have the sun in your sign, so you're shining, I mean, you're showing the way, North Node in your sign. Uh, you are leading, leading the pack as well as, as Cancer. But you're still like, you are the one that is the master of following your heart. And, and this is still on the table. This is still important for you to keep on shining that light, even though you are introverted perhaps more than usual. Um, people look up to you, people send you love. People just love you for who you are. You don't even have to do anything but be you, <laughs> basically. Which is a nice thing, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. I have. I've always loved the Leos. I, yeah, with my MC in Leo, I tried also to, like, for me, whenever we have the sun in Leo and stuff going on in Leo, I, I always find myself in situations where I work-wise get, get the focus and attention. And I do that with my astrology a lot now, not just on the internet. Um, also, and with lots of readings, lots of you know people listening, coming to me, asking uh, groups of people, and it's it's probably the same with you that you can be the focus focus on of attention and just yeah allow yourself allow yourself to show others how it is when you actually know who you are and what you like and what you prefer because not all signs find it so easy you know. Some signs are actually really hard for them to feel what, what do I want because they are too considered with the group. So you find yourself lucky even though that sometimes it can be hard to be a Leo because people can criticize you. Don't worry, we love you. Everyone loves you deep down inside anyway. Thanks for watching and um, have a wonderful week. <laughs>
Summer time, summer time. Så du er min og jeg er vild med dig. 